I'm back. Um, all right, let's run the arch installer then. What's up? Doing some stretches. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about my bike. I don't want to ride it because... Because it's got such like a... Uh, I know, you can hear the dirt in the chain. It's probably not good, right? What is this for? Uh, she won't let me ride it. Which is sad. Because I want to try riding a road bike one day. Um, it's fine though. Alright, so... How the hell do you install Arch? Um, am I connected to the internet? Yep. Huh. IP version 6 isn't working? Hmm. Doesn't make me happy. Okay. So... We're just going to use the um, installation guide, I guess. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, I think there's a quick installer. Should we do the quick installer or the slow installer? You did everything per the wiki. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to do that then. All right, I'll open it up on my um, other screen. All right, so let's go to... Might as well do it the hard way. Yeah. Um, the unnecessarily hard way. Pre-installation, yep, yep, I've done that. Boot the environment. Set the key map, done that. Verify the boot mode. This firmware, EFI, EFI bars. All right, we've got the bars, we've got the internet. Got to do ping archlinux.org. Yep. Got to check the clock. Looks fine. Yeah, looks fine to me. Um, all right, time to petition the disk. This is possibly the the worst part of it all, but we will cope. So F disk dev S VDA, I think, yeah. Um, we want to make a new petition label. Um, we're going to use GPT, so we're going to do make label GPT. Oh. G. The GPT, and we're going to create a new petition. Add a new petition. Uh, one, I guess. Uh, two megabytes. We'll give it, I don't know, how big should it be? Uh, mount boot. Yeah, all right. So this is the EFI, no. What the fuck? 512, okay, 512 megabytes, plus 512 meg, um, how do we change the type? Um, change the petition type, petition type one, and we want to change it to EFI, uh, it's literally number one, okay, one. All right. Um, I think we have to, do we have to mark it as bootable? Let me just check the EFI thing. Um, create the petition. That's fine. All right, next one is root. We're gonna make a root. I would suggest making a swap petition, so we're going to do that. Um, we're going to make a I don't know, one gigabyte swap. 
and type of two will be swap. And we're going to make the final petition, which is going to be our root petition. Oh yeah, you can make a swap file. Let's just do that. All right, so petition number for sector, 100% please. All right, yeah. <laughs> and now we want to, I think, write the petition layout. All right, uh, now we want to format them. So I think it's makefs.fat dev vda1, makefs. I guess XT4 dev video two, right? Um, we're going to, where are we mounting this? Mount, you sure? All right, mount dev video two, mount F32 for fat. Do I need to do that? All right. Um, mount. All right. So in mount, what do we need to do? We got that lost and found. Uh, we also need to mount the EFI petition as food. What the fuck? No. Wait, what? All right. I guess we'll do that. Mount make your dev VDA to mount boot. Uh, so yeah, mount boot. What? I just okay. I mounted the wrong one, and we need to do swap on. How do I make a swap file? Fuck it. I'll do it later. All right, pack strap. The hell is a K? Pack strap. K mount base Linux Linux firmware. That's pretty good. Boot isn't deprecated. Don't worry about that. Just put it in mount boot. It's A-OK. -okay. You can petition the system however you want. Um, personally, I put my EFI petition in the boot EFI. And then I just have a boot. I just have boot as a regular folder. Um, and I guess that's because I'm badass or something, or it might've just been a habit I picked up, um, from using it with BIOS, whatever, whatever it says to do, just remember the way you did it. As long as you're consistent, it should be fine. And I'm glad to see I have high speed internets going on here. So I apologize. Are they soothing? Is that pretty good internet? It's not fast enough, but if I interrupted it, I'm, I'm scared of what would happen. Okay. Okay. 
this is the speed of what your computer should install Arch. And if it's slower than this, you should get a new computer. I think that's the lesson, not sure. Yours is faster and it's a seller one. Yeah. You know what they say about seller? Well, I'm running this in a VM. So, all right, so we need to do gen, F, gen FS tab, mount, mount EDC F tab. That looks about right. Now we have to arch she root into it. And we have to set the time. No, user share zone info. Yeah, we're UDC today. Hardware clock, fuck it, we don't need that. Uh, we need to um do the locals fine um let's create a local and then a local gen that was a bit too fast no i was supposed to edit local.gen for that Just install Vim real quick. Yeah. There we go. Um, we need to edit the host name. Um, Arch Linux, I guess. Now we need to make the init RAM FS. And now we need to. Yeah, nano is pretty good. Let's do password. Um, now bootloader, this is where we're going to have some fun. All right, so let me go to the page for unified kernel image. And let's see, let's see what it wants. You can test the feature by running e Linux UEFI uh, boot. EFI Linux test system dot EFI. I think we need to make, if we go to boot, we need to make an EFI directory, I think. And then in it, we need to make Linux. And then we're just going to do the make in it CPO thing. Does this work? All right. We have EFI boot manager. We need to add the boot entry now. So we've done that. Um, let's just name that boot EFI Linux um, kernel dot EFI. And it says that's fine. It has other junk there. We won't worry about that for now. You added the entry manually. Cool. Let's create disk dev vda 
art one label Linux loader EFI Linux kernel dot EFI. And I think that should be it. Let's try rebooting. All right, and so we get to the prompt here, and I think I know what's happened. We haven't specified what the root file system is. So let's see how we can fix this. Um, let's see. Um, first thing we're gonna do is mount deb VDA2 on its new root, and then bail out by pressing control D and that logs us in. Um, which is good. Uh, I feel like I should write that in chat, but uh, basically you want to mount the new root and then press control D and it will just continue booting. So, how do we fix that? Well, we want to do EDC kernel command line, read write quite BGRT disable root equals dev VDA2. And then we run our command again. Um, And I've kind of messed things up um, by adding a duplicate thing, but that's fine. My boot manager B complete. All right, and let's reboot and see if this works. There we go. So adding the command line helps, but that's not the command line you want to add. Um, we don't want to add that one. We actually, um, we want to go, I'm a hero. Let's find the, that uh, EDC kernel thing. Um, basically what we want to do is dev disk by you by part you uh, by you ID and we want to copy that long thing there um, so we go you ID and then we want to see kernel command line put it into the file and we just want to put that there. And that way, if the numbers change or whatever, we can always have that working. And we're going to get rid of quiet. And now we're going to figure out the next part, which is to set up the preset. So make in at cpo.d linux.preset. Um, what do we want to do? That is actually a very interesting point, Drew. And actually you're right. Um, but not, not specifically that. Um, no, yes and no. So, guess uh, it should do that, but also Arches in at RamFS doesn't support that. I don't think. 
the the partition types there um, are used by system D when you run system D as the init RAM MS. Actually, I think we can use that. Let's uh let's switch to system D as our init RAM MS. So vim edc make init cpo.conf. Let's find books. And let's see if we can use system D in our init RAM FS. Um, I think I use system D for my init RAM FS too. Um, but let's just see, what do we need to do here? We replace UDEV with system D. And I think that's it. So let's try that. The inner map, um, let's also, let's also F disk this, F disk help, help. So we want to set the type of two to Linux root x86, so 23. And we want to write that. And we want to make the init CPO with the system D hook. And let's see if this works. Arch does include system D, but the init CPO is kind of like a first system that runs before system D. You can put system D in that. So let's see if this works. Hey, you're right. If you use system D, then the petition type will figure it out. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, the wiki. It's in the making it CPO thing, but this is kind of like a system D feature. Anyway, uh, this is the Linux experience. But we also need to set up the pre, the, um, you could also probably recover your system with this, right? You could probably just, um, like, did you set up the, the preset file? How do we do that? Linux dot preset. At this point, you could, um, boot the system by mounting the new root, um, then change the hooks to use system D like I did and then run make init CPO space dash P and then reboot and it should work fine. But let's just see if your system requires microcode. No, add a preset. I don't have any pre, oh. Preset EFI image. Default image, default EFI image. And what is that? Boot. E5 Linux kernel. Then we don't have a splash. So we have that. I'm not adding a splash file because I, I don't, it's not happening. Um, and then uh, we do make in it CPOP. And I have to also just clear out the test file I made. Boot EFI Linux test system. Oh, I named it kernel.image. No, it should be .efi. RM tests. So let's just empty out that directory. We run make in it CPOP. Um, I'm not sure why people don't run system D in their init RAM FS. Um, 
Let me check if I run it on my computer. EDC make init CPO comp. No, I don't run it yet because I still haven't figured out how to set up the encryption. Um, one day I'll fix that. We boot Linux. That's pretty fast. Um, don't know where to go from here. I mean, we've we've installed Arch fairly quickly. Um, there's SB Catal. Anything else that's cool that we can do? Um, could we get this to go faster? Yeah, we can't get this to go faster because we use XT4 as a module. So we need Infos. Open box and Firefox. All right. Um, I guess I'll just start explaining stuff. So open box, is that a new, um, so basically for open box, we're going to, inst we're going to add a user. Uh, I think that's user add Jukia. No, user delay Jukia. Um, it's user add H. We want to add, uh, we want to have it also, we want to create a home directory and create a user group and call it Jukia. And then we want to, um, I guess log in as myself. I didn't set the password. Password, Jukia, password, password. All right. Um, we probably want to add like sudo or something. So let's do that. Um, oh shit, I don't have networking set up. All right. Um, this is fun. Um, actually, let's enable some stuff. We're going to enable OOMD. That's good. Um, time sync D. Um, we want network D as well. So we've added Yeah. So that fixes our clock. So we're gonna add a So there's different ways to manage networking. I just use systemd's way because it just involves setting up some files. So let's go to network. Um and we're going to add a file for eth dot link i think hang on let me just check on my computer you need two files i think no you don't you need one file all right so it's eth dot um i think it's we're going to call it eth dot network and we're going to do match emp1 uh we're gonna match by the uh you can match by the mac address which is what i would suggest so we have a mac address here let's save that just write that to the file i guess we want to do match mac address and then we want to delete all this junk and use this address. 
And then we want to go network DHCP equals yes. And then we're going to go network guitar reload. It says it's then I think we have internet now. No, we don't have DNS. All right. We need to set the DNS server. Oh no, we need to set up a DNS thing on our computer. That's right. And I'm going to use system D resolve D for that. There we go. So we now have networking and DNS and stuff. That's good. And we have our own user. The hate it gets is that it replaces a lot of existing tools with tools run by like one, like a small um, group of developers. Uh, I just like the tools because they are a lot easier to use. Um, uh, so let's see, we want to install sudo. And then we want to go to, we want to do vsudo. What to do? Editor equals vim vsudo. And we want to scroll down until we find wheel. Then save that. And then we want to do g password add user jukia to the wheel group. So now my user can run sudo. And we have to log out of my user real quick to do that. Did I type in the password wrong? Yep, all right. Um, the next essential thing I want is to install tmux. Um, I don't know why it's called wheel on Ubuntu, it's called sudo. Um, unclear. So I'm going to just use tmux because it's a terminal multiplexer. It's like easier for me to switch between stuff. Um, so we're going to now install a display manager and I use light DM. Um, yep, we're going to install light DM. And so what a display manager does is that it just manages your, uh, graphical session. In this case, you're like X session or something. And it handles things like seat switching and whatever. And so what we're going to do is system control able enable now light DM, I think. And we're going to see why it failed. And I think it's because we don't have X installed. Do we have X? Oh, we do have X. Oh no, I ran X's root. What the fuck? Um, I think we need to install a greeter for light DM. Yeah, I'm going to install light DM GTK greeter. I think maybe something smaller. Um, let's just see what light DM is complaining about. I think it puts its logs in light DM log. Yeah, it couldn't find the greeter. So that's installing some junk. Um, I've used light DM for a few years. It just, it works and that's good. 
So let's try and restart LightDM. And hey, we have some graphics. Let's try logging in. And we don't have a session because I don't have OpenBox or whatever installed. But I've set that to start automatically at boot. One thing I like to do, which I will do later, is set up auto login. Um, because I don't like messing with logging in. So how do we install OpenBox? Um, there's also Fluxbox, isn't there? Do I want Fluxbox or OpenBox? I used OpenBox back in like 2009. Um, let's see what Fluxbox. It's placed on Blackbox. Oh, that don't, that, that stable releases from 2015. I don't want that. Uh, OpenBox is released from wherever. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll put it on YouTube. Oh my God, I just, I don't know why I unmuted myself. Um, let's install open box. You can always change it later. Um, let's install open box. And let's try restarting light DM. Yeah, I burped. It looks like it's enabled up here. Let's log in. And I think, yeah, this is it. So we now have open box. Um, I think we need to use a menu maker for this because this is not the menu that I want. Um, so first thing we're gonna do though is Pacman is let's search up menu. I think there's two menus now. I once wrote an open box menu thing. It comes with op it comes with that. No. Um I think there was something called XDG menu, but there's also menu maker. Arch Linux XDG menu, and there's also menu maker. Um, let's just use menu maker. That looks cooler. Uh, and I suppose I'm going to have to run it as my user. So menu maker. So I don't know how to invoke it. So one thing you can do is run a Pacman QL in the package name and it will tell you what files it has. And you can see there it says user bin M maker. I think tint two exists. Let's try installing that. Yeah. Let's try M maker. No front end. M maker, I think I have to specify open box. No suitable terminal emulator. We need a terminal emulator. So I'm just going to install um, GNOME terminal. Actually, no, I'll use Xvis4 terminal because that's the one I use on everything. Um, T. Xvis4 terminal. Oh, I can't specify it, can I? Oh no. Oh, I also need to install man for man pages. Yes. Okay. How do we get Xvis4 terminal to work with mmaker? Can we? Is 
Is it XF term? Maybe it's XF term. Oh, I have to overwrite the file. Okay. Let's go to go back and let's see. I think I do I need to restart or we'll go reconfigure open box. Here we go. Um, utilities. Xmas terminal. Yay. I think that's right. Look. Let's open up tint two. Um, I don't know how to use tint. Wow, it's a lot. Um, so how do I automatically start stuff? Um, settings. No, open box, desktops, reconfigure. I think we need to edit the open box config. Yeah, so let's open up a terminal. Config open box and just see what's in here. There's menu.config and that's generated by mmaker. And I can just do tmux attach here. So we have mmaker open box tf term. So we're going to write that down real quick in our notes file, which I encourage you to make. Um, we also need to auto log in. Actually, let's edit light DM to auto log in real quick. We have to do two things for this. We need to go to auto log in. I think we need to find auto login user. I know the contrast sucks. And then we, I think we need to add our user to light DM. Yeah. And that will give us auto login to open box. Um, let's also install Firefox. Um, I guess we'll install yeah, it's asking us, we want to get the pipewise stuff and we probably want to get more fonts. Um, we want for TTF font, we probably want deja vu because I love it. And then we'll save that start. You'll definitely probably need to install like some more configuration stuff. We can have pipewire, pipewire is fine. Um, so is there a way to regularly run? <laughs> I had some issues with pipe wire when I was trying to mess with, um, accessibility stuff. That's all. So we need to run something at auto start and M maker. Is there a button to trigger M maker? Oh yeah, there's an auto start config, I think. Right. Let's see, should I install Pipewire if you want, buddy? Oh, Firefox is ready. So let's run mmaker and go to network, utilities, system. Shells, network, games, editors, development. Um, where is Firefox? Not seeing a Firefox here.
Oh. Oh, I have to reconfigure. That's right. Yeah, it put Pac-Man in games. All right, network, Firefox. We have Firefox. ArchWiki, open box. All right, how do we configure this? There's a lot of stuff here. Um. Already got it started. We've got configuration. We have the menu. All right, so we have XDG auto start and its own auto start. So we're just gonna put stuff in our own auto start. So when we start up, we want to run Tint two, I think. Yeah. The tint, tint two. And I think we need to probably set that as. Writable. No, probably not. Environment themes. We'll worry about that another time. Configuration. Keybinds. Yeah, telling me to play Kai is a meme on this stream because I keep saying no. Keybinds, modifiers, multimedia keys, navigation keys. Um, I guess whenever you install something, you'll have to run the menu maker generator yourself. Um, not too sure. Possibly. Um, I guess you could just run it, uh, I don't know, um, open box automatic menu update. Um, it's Sasha and DuckDuckGo because Google is going to tell you where I live. Open box auto updating menu. Let's see what someone said here. 2011 pipe menu. Yeah. And so that's something you'll have to figure out. Um, there's also a script called update OB menu. Um, I think we have audio now. Let's install have you control for a volume control. And then run M maker and then open box reconfigure. And multimedia volume control. I think I need to install PipeWire. Um, or Wire Plumber. No. Oh, PipeWire Pulse. There. I'll try opening it again. Um, pipe wire pulse. Um, system control user restart wire plumber. Pipe wire. Pipe wire pulse. Restart all these. And there we go. We have audio now. Yay. Yay, I did it. I've got audio. Um, that's pretty cool. We can configure tint too, so let's do that now, I guess. Um, 
let's change the theme to something cooler. Um, anything that looks like GNOME 2, basically. Uh, did I click that properly? Yeah, I want this one. Yeah. That looks like shit. Um, and now let's exit. And that'll kick us back to light DM where we can restart. And we'll see if this, uh, boots back up. It did not automatically log us in. Why? Why does it not do this? It's logging as root real quick. Auto login user Jukia. Hang on. There's something I always forget with Light DM's auto login. <clears throat> So for auto login, we need to auto login session. Um, I guess open box. Oh, I need to be part of the auto login group. Um, like, yeah, and it's auto login, right? Doesn't exist. Group add our auto login. And then we want to restart like, DM. There we go. And we get this. And uh, the tint thing is a bit up high because I probably should have told it to sleep for a second. Um, uh, auto start. We'll just set it to like sleep five. Let's reboot. Ah, uh, it's good enough. It's got Firefox there, that's cool. Um, let's do a sound check. We've got sound. I think. Can I rice it? What do you mean rice it? What does that mean? I don't like that. I don't like you saying that. Um, gradients. Do we need a gradient panel? Uh, so much configuration here. Launcher taskbar. Task buttons. There's too much. There's too much shit here. That is a battery thing. But yeah, that's... That's your basic Arch Linux install, I guess, on a modern computer. Um, let's see what else we're told to do by the wiki after we've installed Arch. Um, installation guide, post installation tutorials. I'm not gonna check Unix porn. Um, we have mirrors, ba, ba, ba. power management. No, I think I pretty much got it all, um, except for fonts, but uh, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, yeah, no, it's all fine.
Um, why does this have multiple desktops? Desktop two, go there. Desktops, desktop one, go there. Can I like switch between them? Control or F one, two, three. Control or, oh, so control or arrow keys. We go between the desktops. Personally, I like I three because I'm, I like tiling window managers. Holy crap, I've been streaming for like forever. So anything else that we need to do? Um, X was for life. Uh, no, no X was. Um, yeah, no problem, Drew. I think I, I might put this up on YouTube. Um, quick Arch Linux install with the Jukes. Why don't I like the mouse? I like the mouse. Um, what other cool stuff can we do? Let's go to the Unix pawn thing. Next up in the marathon, Linux from scratch. Um, the only reason why I wouldn't do that is that I don't want to wait for things to compile. Cross compiling tool chains for hours. Yeah. I mean, I've thought about it, but I just don't really see what the point is. Um, especially when I do end up messing with this kind of stuff, like with build root and stuff. You screwed it up near the last step. I think there is some, I think there's room for Arch Linux modding, if you ask me. Um, maybe I should just make this a series of messed up stuff to do to Arch Linux and like the next step will be making it immutable or something. Like just, Gentoo is just basically Arch, but it compiles stuff. Um, get started. That's actually something interesting to point up. Gentoo off, you can often mix, um, Gentoo's wiki and Arches because they're very similar. Like because Gentoo and Arch both mostly ship stock software without modification or wrappers. So like if we search for cyclist OS, no. If we search for, oh, the one difference with Gen 2 though is that um, you can run it without system D or stuff. It has alternate um, init systems. And so if you're gonna get into like messing with Arch and Linux culture and stuff, um, you have to understand that in its systems are a sore point, And the problem with them mainly is that, um, you can only like pack it. If you're a packager and you're making a package, you have to make scripts for each of these. And in the interest of like saving time and space and whatever, what's happened is that most distributions have standardized by just making system D um, scripts, but classic Unix used to use sysv init scripts. Um, Gen two supports open RC, which is pretty cool. There's also run it. Um, the unfortunate thing though, is that if you actually go hang out around these th things, you will often find a lot of really angry and toxic opinions which uh, isn't great. 
Um, because there is a lot of stuff. There is a lot of cool stuff in Linux, but unfortunately there's just a lot of um, junk around it. And it's always good to learn more. Like you can see here, system D so has system D network D. And that's like just the thing I showed you here. But you know, you might want to use DHC PCD and that's just configured a bit differently kind of. Um, can I do a dramatic reading of the Quora post? Um, I can actually, I can actually do you one better. I can take you somewhere you've never been before on the internet. <laughs> 